I'm thinking of writing comics similar to these. High Voltage Software's cancelled Wii FPS game The Grinder and Mike Mignola, a modern world with supernatural creatures. The government kinda gave up on hiding that monsters exist kinda like Hellboy. I'm also a fan of Devil May Cry and Monster Hunter International, with mercenary hunters who get paid to hunt them. Similar to these, there's no moral dilemma about killing vampires and not all humans or monsters are evil. Is that too much? I'm a fan of Eric Krupke's Supernatural, The X-Files, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunter, and The Last Witch Hunter. So I guess I sort of have an idea of an audience. Of course, it might seem like a lawless setup like this, but you can never have too much inspiration. If you have only one inspiration, then how big is the chance that your story is going to be the exact same with different faces. It took me about a decade to finally understand that I have the choice of being creative over many planes. If I want a character to have red hair, and I have to scrap my OC and give them red hair, I can make a new one and put them in a different story. Too much inspiration is not necessarily an issue if you package it well. Maybe your characters are like Hansel and Gretel, but they're hunt monsters like Sam and Dean and also aliens like in the X-Files. Too much information might cause a problem though. Like if you try to cram too many characters into the foreground like in season 3 of Sex Education where time is is not enough to follow all these characters. You want to stay within a limit or else you end up like on The Bachelor where there's too many people and you never get to see your favorite. And then you might have to end up killing some off which can lead to some readers tuning out because that was their favorite character and you just don't have enough screen time to mourn their death appropriately. They do kill the contestants on The Bachelor, right? Uh, I don't know, I never watched that. If you ever feel overwhelmed with different input, like maybe you want to create this Monster Hunter series, but you just saw a movie about a futuristic intelligence and now it's opening a whole new world for you. You don't have to add everything to your story. You can write multiple ones. I currently have four. And to each story, a piece of information gets assigned. Imagine if you only work on your Monster Hunter story and then when you get famous and Netflix picks it up and you need another decade for your next story because you have to start all over. Be prepared. Don't scrap everything because it wouldn't fit into your story. Make another story parallel to this. What's most important is to have a clear line you follow. This is why I said to write the entire story before starting anything like drawing or final drafts. If I start reading your story and it starts with Sam and Dean hunting aliens, then I would have chosen to read that. that that is what I want to read. Then in chapter 3 we suddenly explore Hogwarts with Hermione Then I just did not sign up with it. Although it kind of sounds cool. I'm not too familiar with a lot of things you listed to be fair but I'm guessing they all follow the same idea of supernatural monsters and maybe you just pull out a few details from different shows or games like clothing from Hansel and Gretel but the monsters from Supernatural and maybe the color grading from X-Files. I don't know. Inspiration can mean many different things and the more work you put into your story the more these things will develop into something unique to you that works with your story. I'll make an example here. When the Netflix show Warrior Nun first came out I added a branding to the backs of my character. A snake in a circular shape with two heads. Sure, I was supposed to represent the temptation of not listening to God to remind them, well, not to do that, but it was extremely obvious that that was where I had gotten the idea from, even though I made it fit into my story. Even though it wasn't even the same thing like a metal ring in her back compared to a branding, but it was still obvious. So over time I reworked it and went into different phases. Now I doubt anyone would ever think that it had anything to do with Warrior Nun, to be honest, even though that's where it all originated. Speaking of Warrior Nun, you also want to be consistent with how you tell a story. Like in the beginning of the show, we have to listen to her thoughts all the time. Personally, I'm not a fan of, but hey, they did that. And then while the story the story? What the hell am I even talking? And then while the story progresses, they scrap it and we don't listen to her thoughts anymore. This is the whole thing of you have to see the whole thing to judge it, but that's not how things work. I'm one of those people who does that. I'll watch the entire thing and then I'll judge because I know that not everybody is an insane story writer and they might have some issues doing it, but that's not good. You can't bank on people maybe doing the whole thing to then judge it. You need to stay good within the first episode and that doesn't mean that while you're writing, you have to start out right. That means that while you're writing, just write and then come back to it. Make sure that the first 15 minutes of reading or watching are worth your while, that people are going to stick with it. It's very important that this time makes the reader stick around because I can tell you one thing, my dad will turn it off if in the first half an hour, nothing blows up, okay? That doesn't mean you have to make something blow up in the first half an hour. That just means that my dad won't watch it so that you can decide whatever you want to do. So to conclude, be open to different things. Don't be afraid to add blatant stolen things. <laughs> Just make sure to overwork them. Really sell your universe to the reader. Make them feel like it's real. That is the ultimate goal. Good luck.